Hi. So you've decided to read Plutarch. Congratulations. You're probably not going to take on his 600,000 words of Greek for the lives. So you're wondering, what's the best English translation? Well, you can read the post below this video, linked below this video, or you could just watch me and I'll go through the options. We have really two kinds of options. The options that everybody likes, free, and the options that people have to pay for. And it really just depends on how many lives you want to read. If you're a completist like me and the podcast and you're going to go through all the lives, it might be worth it to stay with the free ones. If you really just want to explore a certain historical period and get to know maybe five or six lives, it might be worth it to shell out for a paperback. But I'll just let you know right now that there's no real good solution to this problem. Where do we start? With the free options. The free options, as you can tell, are mostly found online and go all the way back to the original English translator of the Parallel Lives. And that is Thomas North, who translated from Jacques Amiot's French translation. I probably utterly ruined Jacques' name. I'm sorry about that. In 1579, these were really the only translations available in the English language for a very, very long time, several hundred years. And yes, these are the translations that Shakespeare used for constructing his plays, Coriolanus, Julius Caesar, and Antony and Cleopatra. But then in the at the end of the 18th century, John Dryden takes over as an editor of an edition that is redone in the middle of the 19th century by a guy named Hugh Arthur Clow. I think that's how you say that. Could be cloth, like rhymes with cough. But I actually have no idea, so I'm gonna say Clow, because that sounds less offensive to him. Anyway, this is still the most common English translation bouncing around the internet. Like if you're finding something on Gutenberg or MIT or hosted by um, any sort of reputable website, it's probably this one uh, or a slightly more recent one done by Bernadotte Perrin, which is early 20th century. Those three are available with a quick Google search, check the links below in the video. And they are, as you would imagine, of 18th century, 19th century, and early 20th century quality. They're gonna have some weird uses of language. And I link to some examples in another uh, post that I did for my blog. The paid for editions really only come in three varieties. There's the Modern Library, and the Modern Library editions have two paperback volumes or one honkin' physical hardcover that has all the lives. The only thing I like about this, you can obviously see that it has been well-loved and well-read, is that the paper quality is pretty high. Um, you can just grab a life there. I can write notes in the margins. There's a little bit of room for me to write notes in the margins and underline. But overall, the nicest thing about it is that it is one volume. This is not the greatest translation. This is the Dryden Cloud translation. So the modern library has updated, although I've noticed very few updates, the Dryden Cloud translation and put it between these two covers and you are just paying to get it. The more updated versions are twofold. First is Penguin, the famous black spines and newsprint gray paper. And the second is Oxford. I don't have any of the Oxfords with me. I actually think the Oxfords are in general printed on nicer paper. And so you may want to go for those in terms of lasting. But if you want to do all of Plutarch's lives in the Penguins, you need to buy six volumes in order to get all the lives. Each of these guys runs about 20 bucks. They're linked in the blog post below. That's $120 to get all of the Plutarch's lives, which you can find the Modern Library Edition for less online, although this hardcover is only available used anymore. That's a lot to shell out, so don't be a completist. That's what I meant, right? The Oxfords are printed on nicer paper, but are only about 28 of the 46 lives that Plutarch wrote. That's a downside. That's not all of them. I'm sure the front and end matter is good. I know the front and end matter in these Plutarch's lives is good. There tends to be an emphasis on just putting one map right there at the end, which kind of covers the whole thing. 
That's not so great. I prefer more the landmark style where the maps are where you need them, when you need them, and you glance over at them and think, ah, that's where we are. That's much more helpful, I have found, and thankfully Landmark is making that more and more popular and more and more of a thing. Anyway, I hope that this video format of the much more intense and in-depth article some of you found helpful. If you did, like the video, and I will see you in other videos. Thanks.